everyone, welcome back to the episode of Jamie Plays with me, Jamie. Today I am going to start a new playthrough of a game called Distant Worlds 2. So this game has been out for, uh, I think, it, a year, maybe two years now? Um, and I play it kind of on and off. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, it's a grand strategy game. You kind of lead a civilization in a real-time uh, strategy, grand strategy um, game. And yeah, I play kind of on and off. I'm not great at it. It is a huge game with an extremely steep learning curve. Um, and I haven't dedicated myself to thousands of hours playing, so I'm by no means an expert. However, I do find it a fun game. And every time there is an update, um, I often decide to play. And guess what? There has been an update. So there's actually, there's been a major update to, um, I think it's the, it's called the fleet update. So it's a huge update that came out um, in the middle of November um, where, yeah, basically there's a um, huge modification to um, the fleet AI um, and actually to many things in the game and lots of performance improvements and things like that. Lots of bug fixes and crashes and all of that. So I thought, you know what, let's give it another try um, because I do enjoy this game and do play it kind of on and off. Um, so we're going to start a new game. Um, I think I'm going to go for just kind of the default settings here, a regular galaxy, um, nebula density normal, let's say 700 um, stars, I'm not going to do a huge map, galaxy size, 6x6 six six sectors, yeah that sounds good. Um, I want to start at, um, let's go with the uh, starting galaxy expansion. Um, hype, yeah, so that way we have some hyperspace, so if you start at pre-warp you have to then unlock hyperspace um, travel um, within this universe and unfortunately that can take um, a really long time so I'm also going to set my tech level to zero that means I believe uh, I will have warp um, because it takes several years to um, actually get anything and to be honest I think that's the most boring part of this game for me so um, we're going to set for normal difficulty normal aggression hostile races near player um, let's just say normal. Research speed will be normal. Um, we can only see the next project visible in our research trees. Um, we'll do fixed research pathing. And uh, let's allow tech trading as well. So threats, I'm going to keep everything normal here. Um, so as it is, so everything normal and everything average. When we kill pirates, they stay dead, they don't respawn. And uh, normal space creatures. For colonization, I'm going to do uh, normal here as well, 100%. And then start a new game, choose your race. Um, I think I'm going to go with the humans. And what I'm actually going to try and do is do kind of a United Federation of Planets run through. So as um, uh, if you've followed this channel before, most of my content is uh, Star Trek based content. Um, so let's try and recreate that here in this game as well. So we are going to be called the United Federation of Planets. And we can get... Um, kind of neutral non-aligned worlds into our empire. So um, yes, I think this is the most Federation E flag as well. So I'm going to go for you. Um, allow uh, allow any government. Let's allow by race. So only the ones that we can do by race will actually be allowed. Um, let's then go for... So I think um, what I'd like to do, because I'm going for kind of a Federation playthrough, uh, democracy... Or would Republic be better? Um, well, Republic would be a lot more in line with um, Mild Boost. Leader replaced from a new character. New character. Um, every eight years for Democracy. Eight years for Republic as well. So Troop Recover Rate and the War Weariness and Counter Espionage are negative. Uh, troop maintenance is also negative here. Um, expanded space stations for democracy, republic, administrative center. Let's actually go with a republic, which is what the federation is anyway. Let's go for you. Um, normal starting expansion means we only have our home system. Um, let's go for uh, level zero for the tech level as well. Um, Pre-warp means zero tech research. Expansion is greater than starting the tech level, must be at least tech level one. Yeah, no, we're going... Yeah, let's go for tech level zero. 
and a random location. The other empires will just do those randomly. Um, I am going to lower the number. Um, let's go to something like 8. I think that will be a little bit easier on my computer as well. Um, victory conditions, we'll set all of that to on, all of that, leave it all on, all possible victory types. And so let's generate this galaxy. So it's, I really enjoy uh, Distant Worlds 2, um, but as I said, because it's uh, a game takes a long time, it's very much grand strategy in a way that even something like Stellaris, Stellaris touches on a lot of things, uh, for example, economy and resource trading and research and exploration, all of that. Um, Distant Worlds 2 laughs at the very shallow nature of Stellaris. Um, we are going to be going extremely in-depth into lots of various systems, and because it's such a huge game, you actually play with AI, or you can play with AI, and in fact it's recommended. Um, and a lot of people will, for example, do an economic playthrough, and what that means is they let the AI control everything else, and control the economy in their empire. Or they do a military playthrough, so they um, have the AI control every other aspect of their empire, or their, their game, um, and the only thing that they do is run the military. Um, so I will definitely be playing with the AI on, as I have said, I'm not an expert in this game at all, by any means. Um, and instead what we're going, well, we're going to be, uh, you, uh, the AI will suggest many things, so I have it on the default settings. So the AI will suggest a lot of things to us, especially for things like events, um, or actions that it thinks we should take, um, and it will suggest that, and we'll either accept it or reject it, depending on how we feel and how we feel the Federation would do it. So for example, by default, um, it will sometimes say, oh, I think you should diplomatically try and impress these neutral civilizations or these individual planets. Um, and sometimes it will say, I think you should outright conquer these planets because they hate you and nothing you do at the moment is going to change that. Um, so obviously for a situation like that, I'm not going to conquer planets because I am the you know, Federation of Planets. What we're going to do is we're going to expand, we're going to create friendly relations, we're going to learn about these people. Um, there is research that helps you, for example, understand other empires' culture and find things in common, all that jazz, um, send bribes, all that kind of stuff. That's how we will bring people into the into our United Federation of Planets. Um, so that will be kind of our game plan for this playthrough. So there are a lot of events and things as well that makes each playthrough very unique. Um, of course, the galaxy is generated randomly as it's doing right now. Um, and it's, I find this to be a very interesting game. However, as I said, the learning curve is extremely steep. So because there are so many systems, there are so many moving parts working together, um, there are people who have been playing this for thousands of hours and are still discovering new things or are just now saying, oh, I'm taking the AI off of um, exploration, for example, so I'm manually exploring everything, and I didn't know it could do this, or I found this, or, oh, this event has just, even though I've played thousands of hours, this event has just popped up, and um, yeah, things of that kind of nature. So there's there's constantly new, and, uh, new things that are being thrown at you. There are constantly um, new content, um, new fixes, new bug patches, all of that that are being update, uh, that are sent out via updates. So yeah, this game is um, very big. So we're the humans. Our faction is known as the United Federation of Planet. Our government is Republic. We're the humans who are typically aggressive and careful. So this aggressive, I'm going to be aggressive dipl diplomatically, aggressive in diplomacy. Um, humans have natural research and all uh, natural skills in all research, diplomacy, war weariness, reduction, espionage, and trade income. Our leader is uh, Loras Tarfan. Our home economy is Pacon 5, a continental planet in the Pacon system. Nearby um, is the rocky metallic moon of uh, Fuefeko. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, our faction has basic spacefaring technology and we are exploring our home system. Explore, expand, and conquer. So let's get started. So we are down here. Oop. Looks like we might have kind of missed our... Oh, no, it's loaded. Oh, maybe it's just loading for the first time. Oh, here we go. Yes, here we go. So we, as you can see, we can zoom all the way out and all the way in. Oh. If it responds to me, you doing okay? Let's go to our planet. 
Are you still thinking about things? Is that what's happening? Yes. So this is our plan. As you can see, I'm just going to scroll out with the mouse wheel. We can scroll all the way out to the galactic level. And we can scroll all the way in as well to very... Ooh, through the planet, apparently. Yes. So we can get very close. And this is what kind of our planet looks like. Um, there are lots of animations and things that go on, so as you develop your planet, it will look more developed. Um, so that would be very interesting. So we have a new scientist um, who's appeared here. So again, our the AI will be moving our leaders around as well. Um, and we get leaders kind of randomly. Uh, they come from events, different things. So we'll meet somebody and we might send suddenly and we have an ambassador available. Um, or... It's kind of somebody has distinguished themselves um, in the diplomatic corps, and we then get a leader from that. So I'm going to unpause. Oh, to the stars. Uh, in the ancient human city ruins, so that is a um, facility here on our planet, so we get plus 10 colony development, plus 5 high-tech research, and plus 7 scenery. So, um, we've made a curious discovery. For countless generations, we've looked to the stars while living among the remains of a civilization of our ancestors. So the idea behind this game is that long, long time ago, there was a huge galactic war and all of these empires and powers were fighting against kind of an external invader. And while we succeeded, I think, in shutting them out of the universe, maybe in a different dimension, I'm not quite sure about the lore there. Please, somebody correct me if you do know it. Um, all of our empires collapsed during that. So we are a remnant of this kind of empire which is why there are ancient cities we'll find more things like this on other planets as we go along um, and it will tell us more of the story and also um, give us more bonuses and things so anyway tales from those days of a terrible cataclysm which destroyed them were passed down to us but only recently has our science allowed us to better understand the artifacts they left behind uh, we now know for certain that we are not the first of our kind to leave our planet they went to the stars before us and left a path for us to follow in the form of these ancient relics. Our long study of these ruins have helped us to uh, learn to construct starships and possibly even faster than light uh, travel without the effects of time dilation. We have also recovered a great many unusual resources vital to these technologies from the ruins. Most of these resources do not otherwise exist on our world and must be used carefully. As our first priority, we must find more of these resources our ancestor had access to to allow our research and exploration to continue. We must also complete our hyperspace research to allow us much more rapid to much more rapidly explore our solar system and beyond uh, perhaps just perhaps our ancestors are still out there somewhere waiting for us but the legends of destruction mean that we must also prepare our defenses for whatever we may find we have found technology that advanced our understanding of early warp field experiments as well as research labs there and we gain those bonuses that i've read off already great so we've chosen our government uh, we've gained gains insight into planetary governments uh, our first such facility has already been constructed on our home world. So we see this facility here, Planetary uh, Admin Center. Um, and this helps us, gives us a bunch of uh, location bonuses and empire bonuses as well, which is beautiful. So we'll dismiss that. So let's take a look at our research. It's going for kind of basic weaponry. And if we just let it go, it will research whatever it wants. However, this is where I'm going to be kind of interrupting the AI a lot. Um, instead, what we're going to do, let's go for, ah uh, yes, we have early warp fields um, experiments, so we have a hyperdrive, but it's very kind of unstable, um, it, you can only jump by 300, uh, uh, 3 million, um, I think that's in meters, um, I'm not 100% sure what the unit is, but at the moment we can only jump around our home system, however, what I want to do is actually go for the stable warp fields, it's going to take Oh, 18.6 years to research, but I think actually um, we will be able to get that a little bit sooner. So as you can see, there's also a cost to research. So if I click here, we need to pay 500 credits, uh, 50 emeros crystals, the necro stones, the membar, the polyamor, and the carbonite. We did just find that in our ruin as we read the, um, the that description. So I'm going to pay those costs. We're going to move the weaponry down. Um, let's do the stable warp fields first. Yes, and I'm going to speed up the game as well. So we can go up to 4x, uh, 4 times the speed here, which is great. So our advisor suggestion, this is the AI, is that we build a small spaceport. So I'm definitely going to do that. So it's going to take uh, 
10,790 uh, credits, so I'm going to do that. That's going to come from here, because we're directly spending that. There are actually two types of economy in the game. There's the state economy, which is the one we control, and then there's a private economy, which are like civilians and things. Um, the private economy will run things like our civilian ships, so for example, cargo um, freighters or luxury cruise liners or things of that nature. Um, which is great because they also form the backbone of our transportation network. So we don't actively transport resources to where they're needed. Instead, what happens is, for example, we say, oh, I want, for example, here, I want 300, uh, or, sorry, 3000 cast long. And whenever it goes below this maintenance, this maintain level, um, a transport ship will go somewhere else in our empire where they have an excess and transport it to these places. And that's all done with the private economy. So I'm also going to build an escort ship as well, so we're going to run into pirates. Yeah, but at the moment, what we're doing is we are building... Oh, it's think... Yeah, it was thinking about something. We are building this spaceport. Um, and as we can see here, it's got um, no engines, five weapons, five defense... Uh, six defense uh, units, one sensor module, a hangar module, and 12 general modules. And then it's we're currently building the hull. And then shortly afterwards, we'll start adding armor and start building those modules as well. Uh, yeah, so we've we've built one. Uh, as you can see here, this this green number, those green numbers are increasing, uh, which is beautiful. And those are weapons, for example, which is why we now have the weapon rings. So if we we can see here that this is uh, the farthest distance, this is middle distance, and this is kind of the closest distance um, for its weapons. And we'll get shields and all of that, and all of that. So, we have... So, we have some explorer ships, and the AI is taking care of them right now. But we have... Um, we've made it to... Oh, hold on. We have another one somewhere. Pacon 7. Where is Pacon 7? 4, 5, 6, 7. So, we also have someone over here that's been exploring, this one. And it's found some resources. So what we can do here is we can build a mining station, and this is, as it says, a private economy expense. So that means somebody is going to run it for us, um, but we will get those... Um, yeah, we will get these resources, basically, and especially um, Cascon, uh, Caslon, sorry, Caslon is our fuel. Um, common gas that is universal uh, reactor fuel It's found in gas giant worlds. We also have Krypton, which is typically used in weapons, shielding, and reactor components. And we've also discovered Argon, which is used in weapons, shielding, and reactor components as well. So we definitely want to assign a mission to um, build that mining station there. Um, and we're going to get those a lot. So at the moment, we have... Um, that's our... Con that's our frigate... Uh, sorry, our... Not our frigate... Um, an escort ship that's under construction. We have a light cargo hauler here. Um, we have another survey ship here, which is actually surveying our home planet because we don't know much about it. Um, so we've completed this small spaceport and we've discovered um, here at our moon, we have discovered a new resource called steel, which is uh, big in construction. So I'm going to build that one already before the advisor even says, oh, would you think about doing this? So we have a spaceport. Spaceports are good for trading, um, good for moving around resources, and also for building things. So for example, um, we're currently building a small freighter. That's something that the private economy asked us to do. We didn't, um, we didn't set that to build. However, we do get money because of course we're building something for someone else. Oh, so we've discovered some more special resources. So these ones that have these bonuses here are special resources. If we get those, and if our planets have them, for example, our uh, our planet will have plus five colony development speed and plus one colony income from that one. Uh, the one above it was five percent colony development. So it's great to have these special resources, um, and they really help our colonies develop and grow. So that's great. We've also found um, on Pacone One a purple gemstone using weapon components. And on Pokemon 6, we found silicon, which is used in electronic components and energy collectors. So I definitely want to... Yep. Nope. Okay, why is that taking so long? Yeah, so for example, I would definitely like to say, yep, we'll do that. 
and let's jump to pack and one and we will get all of those as well that's great um those crystals as well will be helpful so we have um this is our research so i'll just go through this menu here not menu this um this bar up here we have our research our current research that we're doing we can do re multiple research projects at the same time but it will split our resources between them uh, we have our colonies and our population we have our current cash and cash flow is in the brackets and then we have our date and the speed um, so those are kind of our this is our basic view over here uh, let's get rid of all of those because we don't need those anymore yeah so as I've said, we've already looked through kind of our economy and um, we can see exactly, for example, our cash flow, what we're building. Um, and actually, I find this a little bit difficult to to read because all of these numbers are red and then suddenly we have a green one down here. And that's because we're receiving tax. So it's actually this number here minus kind of this total number here. Um, but there's also so we'll also get money from trade as well, but we don't know anyone yet. But then we will also get things like shipbuilding. So last year we got uh, 5,856 um, cash. And so far this year we have 9,736 um, from ships that we've built for them. Oh, so we've found we have a new spy. Not Yeah, so sometimes those just randomly happen. Um, so we found some more. Oh, Hakon 2. You would be a good place for a mining station as well. Oh, pack on eight. So basically, um, our starting system is going to be kind of rich in resources simply because, um, in the basic ones, simply because we need them to get out of the system. Um, and because I'm not playing on a terribly difficult uh, level. Yes, and we can also mine asteroids as well. Uh, what I'd like to do, though, our mining stations have a radius around it, and I think I can get a lot of those asteroids in it. So let's try for you. Now, you have no resources no point in building a mining station there okay let's get rid of those um notifications like that so i'm just right clicking to get rid of those so these menus i find very very complex this is what makes the game so difficult so we have as i said our economy we have our funding levels so we can change for example how much we're of our how much we get of our cash is going to be reserved um, how much is going to ship maintenance and troop maintenance and facility maintenance. Have I already built one there? Yes, I already said. Okay, so we've also got... Um, so these are our total expenses. And then we also have, the, for the excess money, how are we going to use that? Colony growth or research. So of course, um, the more, the higher the colony growth, the less the research. So if I, for example, click that, it's right there. So we're just going to leave that as it is for right now. There's maintenance that shows you how much you're paying per type of ship and for military ships, per type of other ship or station, starbase, um, and then for private things as well. I believe this amount of maintenance is coming from the private economy. It should be. Um, we have our government. Um, we can change our government here. Um, we have the bonuses we get from all of our sources. So this includes our government. This will include things like um, research facilities for our for our different types of research. Um, any kind of buildings we get that affect the entire empire, that will all be here as well. We have um, information about our leader. Uh, do we all? Yeah, we just have the one leader. Um, and then policy settings. So we can say, for example, for our automation, this is where we can set all of our automation stuff. So for example, diplomacy. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave you at suggest. This is how, this is where it comes up and says like, oh, we suggest you make the implementation, but we'll not implement it unless you approve them. That's the ones that show up here. Um, or we can say fully, fully automate this, oh, suggest and execute. So it will tell me, here's a suggestion, but I'm already going to do it unless you cancel it. Or fully automate everything, uh, which means nothing even shows up here. And the AI is just like, you know what, I'm going to build a, um, I'm going to build that for you. So we have diplomacy, we have nothing here, we haven't met anyone, we do have a spy, um, but that's just kind of in preparation for meeting people. Um, we have some of our characters, so these are just kind of, uh, I've had the non-spy selected here at the moment, and then we're doing by role. So we have a general who's on our home system, we have our president in the home system of course, 
and they have various skills and traits and things that affect um, things um, on our planets as well as in our empire. So for example, you're a poor recruiter. That's not great. Minus 10% troop uh, recruitment rate. Or we have a scientist doing nothing. That's because we have no science. Um, yeah, we have no science um, buildings. We have a spy and we have no prisoners. We haven't captured anyone from there. We have our colonies. Um, we can, when we get um, new colony candidates, we can colonize them from here if we want to have it done automatically. Colony ships, um, planetary facilities. These are the ones on Paco and Five because it's the only place we have. And any artifacts that we find. Here, this is our exploration. So we have five exploratory vessels. They are moving around doing their thing. One, for example, is refueling. So it's getting some castle on that's here and it's refueling. And these are our ships. So for example, here's a tr uh, transport cargo and it's transporting Castlon and Argon and it's taking them to the spaceport, um, which is great. So we have, most of them are serve, um, all of these are surveying now, so everyone has enough fuel um, from the look of it. So fuel 157 of 200, so that's great. Um, fuel gives your ship energy um, and it's generally, it consumes the fuel over time. If it runs out of fuel, the ship then has very, very little energy and will take forever. It can no longer warp, but it will try and take forever to get back to um, where you are or where it can actually refuel. So those are our exploration ships. Um, if we know of any ruins, um, we can then kind of try and explore them if, they're, if we don't know about them. Or um, if we know about them, then we get the information about them. Any abandoned ships or bases that we can try and take over, um, that will be very useful. And any special locations that we've found um, of which there are many. Lots of resources here, all of the resources we've found. So this is this is just the ones we've encountered so far. There are so many in this game, um, so many. Some of them are very useful. Some of them are just kind of um, extra things. So for example, the yellow ones are construction. The blue one, which is Castlon, is for fuel. Um, and I think, uh... Oh, I just have the production ones. Fuel and construction resources in use. I could say all resources, and these light blue ones are luxuries. But I'm going to go back to uh, fleet uh, fuel and construction. Oh, so on our homeworld, we found more unknown things, which is great. Oh, our scientists have, pursued, have been pursuing the wrong path when researching stable warp fields. The mistake has set back progress on the project as existing research is cancelled and new ideas are investigated. Well, that's a shame because it means that we've lost some of our progress here. However, we will be okay. So ship construction, here's where we can uh, build new ships. So there's um, all of your spaceports and your planets will be able to build ships. Spaceports build them much better. Um, and we can, so we have the spaceport here. If we, when we colonize new planets, we can then put a spaceport around them. We can actually do that directly from this menu. Construction ships, we only have the one construction ship. We don't need tons at the moment. Um, however, we will need them more and more as the Empire, or as our Federation grows. Um, we have the build order for primarily military fleets, although exploration ships, construction ships, and fuel tankers are in here as well. And then we can sh set our own ship designs for various things. I'm letting the AI uh, do that automatically, because it actually does a great job. So. Um, in the research screen, we can set new research by clicking here. We have our any research building, so the spaceport is helping that. Um, res new research locations where we can get new research buildings. Um, any bonuses that we have, so for example, um, as the human race and as the Republic government we have gives a plus 5% bonus each to all research. And then high-tech research, we get 5% from, I think, the this human remain, this uh, city ruins. Yep, five, plus 5% five tech research. Nope. We found a new discovery here that increases our colony development on our home world. Beautiful. And then, of course, any scientists. And our scientists currently, you're just waiting at Pakun 5. There's literally nowhere else to go because there's no science stations yet, so we can't do you. So here is our military. Um, lots of things here. So these are all of our military ships. And then any fleets we've assigned or the AI has also assigned. 
any troops that we have, so we have some basic troops on our homeworld to defend it, so that when people try and land, um, we're okay. We have admirals and generals, of course they're not doing anything at the moment. Defensive bases, we don't have any. Monitoring stations, we don't have any. New monitoring locations, we don't have any there either. Enemy targets, so these are um, empires that we are unfriendly with, and especially those that are at war with, as well as things like pirates, we can target them here. And then any dangerous locations, which usually show things like space creatures that we'll need to fight. And then finally, we have our civilian tab here, that shows all of our civilian ships, uh, civilian ships, including things like our, um, uh, I want to say, um, oh yeah, sorry. These are ore haulers. So what these do is that if we're missing a resource, for example, we don't have a mining station somewhere. They will actually, and for example, we need um, this uh, Mebnar, for example. These mining ships will actually go out and mine it for us. So we don't necessarily need to build the mining stations. However, if we want a steady supply of that resource, then we absolutely need to build those mining stations. So we can then uh, look at just the freighters, for example. This one is being built, so it's red, it's under construction. That's what that means. And we can see what they're transporting, if they have any missions. So for example, this one's just sitting here nothing to do at the moment there's nothing to transport oh that's because it has been transport has just been constructed and is now leaving in the construction yard this one for example no mission not doing anything it's just kind of oh because it's under construction yes of course and now it's off to do things so passenger ships this will take us to things like our resort bases which again we don't have any of at the moment we don't have any resort bases and we can build new resort uh, bases at around things like planets or beautiful stars, beautiful locations, once we have access to that kind of research. So what I'm actually going to do, um, once we do these warp fields, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the expanded civilian ships. Um, so this gives us things like the remote fuel transfer um, module for ships. And then we can build colony ships, medium mining ships, small passenger ships, and a small fuel tanker. So I'm going to do this because um, this will give us a nice boost to our private economy, and especially our private economy of the two is more important on the whole. So this is kind of our purchasing power, how much we can purchase right now, but our private economy is what's going to be um, actually running things in our empire. Um, things like buying transport ships, um, buying fuel, uh, all of those kinds of things. And so we need to have a strong private economy, which is based on civilian ships, which is why I've chosen that research first. However, it's still going to take us a while to research hyperdrive technology before we can get outside of our um, outside of our system. So for right now, we are confined to the system, and it's basically we need to colonization low. There's nothing there that we know of. Uh, oh, this is a an asteroid field. Is there anything here that would be worth building? Let's actually go to our resources and say mining locations. Uh, production oversupply. So we are actually great for steel. However, that's only kind of for right now. And actually we're short on Mebnar. Well, I think let's have our construction ship just do these. You know what? I'm actually going to build another construction ship. Because I have a feeling our construction ship is really slow uh where's uh mining ship oh sorry i need to go here construction ships so you uh oh you can warp okay or you can go into you can move faster okay i thought for a minute that might not be able to move fast so it'd be moving at this speed across the system anyway uh let's go ahead and build another construction ship maybe let's do two construction ships because they're always good to have so as you see there's a purchase cost and a maintenance cost so i went like that um yeah there would be it cost me about seven thousand to build it and then 347 to maintain both of them so that's something to keep in mind you want to have a positive cash and positive cash flow um if you don't well bad things really start happening okay so, and as you can see, if we click here, we can say, uh, left click to queue a new, oh, to remove escort. So there's nothing queued here. However, it does give us the amount of time it would take if we were to queue it now to actually build this. And this is in kind of, um, 
well, in game seconds, but if you slow it down to one, for example, to a speed of one, as I've just done, one second in game is one second in real life. It doesn't mean, of course, that the, uh, so one second is about one day, I think. Um, so it would take kind of 502 days, um, but it would take kind of in the real world about 500 real world seconds if you're on speed one. So, uh, construction has been completed. That's great. You should now be, um, you have fuel. You should be picking up resources and things. Let's actually watch you. So you're going to build that. It's waiting, I think, um, because this is a small spaceport, there's only the one bay that it can get, go into, or there's only the one way in and out. So yeah, it's just loaded those cargo resources, and now it will... Um, and I think, yeah, this allows two ships to be in that bay at that moment in time. Yeah, okay. So we, can, we will be able to upgrade this once we increase our research and get a medium and then large spaceport designs. Um, which can handle a lot more ships, can build a lot faster, can build a lot more at one time, um, and yeah, will be just generally a lot more useful. Adamant Pathfinder is building a mining station here, that's great. So where are you? You are, oh, zoomed in a little bit too close. You are moving down here. So yeah, that's coming along nicely from the look of it, although it's very slow, to be honest. Um, this is ex very slow for warp speeds, because when we get, as you can see, this yellow ring is as far as we can go. Um, the absolute farthest we can go. Um, oh, let's assign you. So this, I think this orange ring is how far you can go and come back before you run out of fuel. So as you can see, we can't even leave our home system yet. But what I would like to do... Um, well, of course, in 3.14 years, we're going to get the next, um, the next level, and that will then bring us, I think, to about, we'll be able to do kind of this local area, at least, um, so probably some of these stars around, then we can start establishing things like star bases, and that will actually, and those, those help to extend our range. Anything where it has a refuel icon like this will extend our range, um, including things just like planets and mining stations. So if we just find another gas giant that has uh, this Castellon here, um, we then build a mining station, that becomes a refueling station. Uh, which will be beautiful, because we are currently in a deficit for ca uh, Castellon. Our spaceport, it's not showing our resources. Oh yeah, see? Resource shortage on hand, we want that amount, or we want to maintain about 20,000. We have on hand uh, 11,500. Um, if we go over here, um, we have about 4,000, 4,100, um, so it's constantly mining, but we need those um, civilian ships to, these cargo ships that are coming in, to transfer the resources. So yeah, these small mining modules are going to um, mine things here, and then we're sending about, yeah, and because these are small mining, um, the small cargo ships, they can't actually do much. Um, and of course, the station has three different resources, so they're splitting their um, they're splitting their loads between those three things rather than yeah, doing it just doing one, for example. Same as happening here with those resources. However, we seem to be doing well on the whole. Yeah, so for example, this is the uh, you're under construction. Oh yes, okay. So you are a console. You're a Supporting the Noble Bluff, which is this uh, construction ship. Yeah, so our military ship is actually escorting this one. Not that we need it at the moment, but pirates can jump in and out and suddenly be on top of you in an instant. So we're going to need a lot of, um, even playing peacefully, we're going to need a lot of military ships doing a lot of uh, escort, uh, a lot of escort missions for our construction ships and things of that nature. So uh, you have now been, you've been built, and they're running back and forth between you there. That should mean we're, yes, we're building more small freighters uh, on the planet as well, or in orbit of the planet as well. So these small freighters will start running back and forth as well. Um, and then hopefully in two years, plus the amount of time it does 
to ex um, to actually research the expanded civilian ships, we can then have um, medium. Oh, sorry, medium mining ship, small colony ship, small fuel tanker, remote fuel. Yeah. So the other thing to think about with research is that while we will get potentially access to these, oh, sorry, to these expanded ships, we also need the modules that are required. So, for example, colonization, small colonization, a small colony ship needs a colonization module, which we do not have yet. We have the basic exploration one. Um, crew systems. Uh, colonization is, yeah, basic colonization right here. We need that before we can build a colony ship. Or, for example, um, there's a troop module somewhere. Uh, research labs. Oh, that would actually be a good one to build. Let's do you and put you before the railgun weaponry. Um, so, for example, like troop uh, transport systems, which includes a troop compartment. So we can't build troop ships until we have this and all of the research necessary to have troop transport ships. So I'm going to take a quick sip of a drink because my throat is now getting sore. Yeah, so lots of explanation, little gameplay at the moment. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. But yes, in 1.69 years, we will then have the next warp bubble generator, and uh, we'll be able to kind of uh, leave this solar system as well. So what I'm going to do, I am going to put a cut in the episode here, because it's already been a little bit of a long one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick up, uh, so I'm going to continue building some of these stations, um, which is basically all that's going to happen now, and we're going to pick up once this warp bubble generator is completed in the next episode. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. If so, definitely please remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time for another episode of Jamie Plays. Bye for now.